Hey everybody, welcome back. In this episode, I'm picking up where I left off in the previous episode, where I was showing you how to convert your jQuery and Ajax type of requests from an old Rails application into the new Rails 7 best practice of doing things, which involves using the Turbo and Stimulus JS front end frameworks. One of the quirks about Turbo and Stimulus JS I noticed in my previous episode is that unlike previous versions of Rails, where it was easy to render a JavaScript file and have that executed on the front end of your web browser, Turbo kind of has a limitation in it in that while it's very good at changing particular elements within your DOM, it allows you to add elements or remove elements or change the contents of HTML tags. One of the things that it can't do is allow you to execute JavaScript on the fly like you used to be able to do in older versions of Rails. So in this episode, I'm gonna show you a method that I devised to help you go and accomplish that and run JavaScript. Now, the reason that you might wanna be executing JavaScript after a turbo request is because you might have a JavaScript driven state of the page. For example, you might have a menu that's open that you wanna close, or you might wanna have a particular CSS attribute on an HTML tag change. And it might be very difficult to build a turbo stream with the HTML to do that. You might have to actually execute it using JavaScript, or it might just be the easier way of accomplishing that. So in this video, I'm gonna show you the problem in my application that I wanna solve and how I went about being able to do that and running a particular piece of JavaScript code on my front end after a Turbo request. I'm gonna start off this video with a refresher on the feature and what it's supposed to do. So here's my stock analysis program. It has a report here with stocks and trading information about them at a given point in time. And sometimes when I'm looking at these reports, I may review a stock and not have any interest in it for some time, but I might want to be able to check it again later, but I want to sort of hide it from the reports. And I have this H button here for hiding something. So let's say I want to hide GameStop. I'll hit H and well, it doesn't really hide the ticker symbol in the traditional sense. It just kind of dims it on the report, but it just lets me know that I reviewed the stock and I'm not interested in it now, but I might want to revisit it soon. Basically, I guess you could say this feature which I'm calling hide, will dim and undim certain tickers on this report. Notice here it displays a message that has the date that it's hidden until. So on the initial time that I click it, it's gonna have like a week that it hides it. If I click it again, it's gonna hide it for a few more days and then a longer period of time. If I click it enough times, it's going to unhide that and reinitialize that ticker symbol. And, you know, sometimes I might um, see it on the report and say, you know what, maybe I do want to review this again, or I might have accidentally clicked something and I want to undo that action. So I could just cycle through it kind of like a toggle. And there we go, we, the dates change up there. Now the dilemma that I'm facing here is that the turbo way of doing things, it would send a request, like when you click this, it would send your post with the information to the hide endpoint. And the turbo way of doing things is that it would send back to the front end a turbo stream that would tell it to replace this particular line with the update information, which would be the new CSS classes that dim this particular symbol. Now the problem with that is every time I run this report, it's an expensive operation to build. And not only that, but the data might change between reports. And I don't want to do that. I don't want to have it go through the taxing operation of requerying the database and setting up this entire table again, which might change the whole list, might change the numbers on the list. And not only that, but if it's a long list and the contents of this changes, I might lose the place that I was at in the list because the order of these could change between refreshes. Basically, I wanna keep this page as is and just change some CSS classes on the report rows. And the problem is that with a turbo stream, 
you could replace whole HTML elements, but it doesn't really allow you to change the attributes of those HTML elements. You gotta replace the whole thing. And that brings me back to the dilemma in that I don't wanna to have to rebuild the report because I have to rebuild the whole report in order to get the information to rebuild that particular line. So is there a way that I could just send like um, information about how to change the CSS class that I want on the particular line that I want? Well, the approach that I came up with is to set up the page so that it has the information already on how the change from the visible class to the dim class is going to occur. Have that on the page in the document object model, but in a hidden state. And when you run the hide action, it'll send back a message that tells a stimulus controller how to make the change or to actually swap out the classes. So here, let's take a look at my report line template, which builds these table rows. And here I've got the class, which is the one that we're using, using the helper class for TD. And then I'm also inserting additional information there that isn't going to play a role until we need it. We're going to have the class show, which goes to class for TD show and class hidden for class for TD hidden. And let's go ahead and look at the helper file. And as you can see here, class for D TD, which is uh, whatever the class is by default that's going to display, is going to have the, it's going to show either the hidden version or the show version, depending on whether this gray symbol flag is true. So if we go over here to uh, class for show, I have this long complicated logic that uh, shows how to build it out depending on which field that you're in, you know, whether you're looking at the volume or the price, because I have some variations within those table cells. But if it's hidden, I just have the base for the class, which is going to be whether it's right or left justified, you know, whether it's a number or not, or, uh, or text, so it's right or left of the cell. And then I'm just specifying the gray color with no additional formatting. That's how it appears when it's hidden. Let's take a look at that in the HTML of the actual page. So I'm going to bring up the page here and we'll look at some of the rows. And like on this row, I'm looking here for the GameStop row. You can see that I have the class, which is the how it's supposed to show. It has the base class, which corresponds to the CSS sheet. And then it just specifies gray for the coloring. And then each table cell has a specifier for the class hidden and the class show describing what it's supposed to be like. If we look at another line, for example, the line right below this, RCI, uh, as you can see there, the contents of this class show is appearing in the class. So now how does Turbo tell the page to execute the JavaScript action that's actually going to swap out, that's going to actually perform the swap of the class information. And it's going to, whenever you hit that button, it's going to change the class to be whatever the show contents is or the hide contents is appropriately. Well, in a previous video that I did, I found out that whenever you re-render a particular element on the page and Turbo rebuilds that, it's going to reinitialize any stimulus controllers there. So you can use the Turbo Stimulus Connect function to determine whether or not an HTML element on a page has been refreshed by Turbo. So the way that I'm dealing with this here is in my application template, which is the topmost level of templating in this application, I set up a turbo event dispatch area, which I'm going to be looking for observing for changes for whenever I want to send a particular JavaScript message on the rest of the page. So here we have the turbo event dispatch partial. I'm going to bring that up here. And basically all it is is just a an identifier here for turbo event dispatch and this kind of blank area by default. And I'm going to render something in here with a turbo stream 
if there's ever a particular JavaScript message that I want to push through to the front end. So let's take a look at my tickers controller here. So here we have the hide action and it sets a flash message uh, using the Rails flash feature that renders without a layout. Let's look at the turbo stream for that, the hide turbo stream. And here we're doing a replacement on two areas of the page, essentially two turbo streams. We're replacing the flash message and we're also going to replace the contents of this turbo event dispatch area. Now the content for this is going to be the name of the event that I want to have go through along with any metadata. So let's take a look at what that looks like. So if we're hiding it, we're going to have an event set up called report line hide. And then if it's not hidden, uh, yeah, if it's, if we're not hiding it, we're going to unhide it. We'll have a report line unhide message that we want to send through the program. And on the front end now, I've got two controllers. I have the turbo event dispatch controller, which is going to be watching for the changes in that HTML element. Essentially, this is going to be our observer. And if a message pops up in there, it's going to dispatch it to the JavaScript front end. And then I also have the report line controller. And here's where the magic happens, where it does the swap out. We have a handle hide event and a handle unhide event. And they call the respective function here that does the swap. Here, let's take a look again at the report line template. As you can see here, data action. I have it pointing to the report line controller and it's pointing to those particular event handlers for these messages on the window. Let's go back to the Turbo Event Dispatch Controller. So what it does here is it digests the HTML inside there. I'm going to have some sort of a JSON type of information that tells it as a key what the event name is and a series of, well, whatever information I want to attach with that event, which would be the value. And once it's done, it's going to clear out the contents of this and make it uh, an empty string again. But here I have a, a console log message here so that we could see exactly what's going on in our console when it receives that event. So we're going to go back to our program here and we're going to look at the console this time. Okay, so when we initially load the page, it says that the uh, Turbo event dispatcher is activated and the text that's in that field is blank. But now look what happens when we try to hide something. We hit that and it dispatches this event here, report line hide. This is the contents of that element which get digested as JSON and processed right here. So this was the inner HTML and it calls this, it reads that HTML and then it does some processing on it. And then here it does the window.dispatch event based on this information right here. All we need to know is which ticker symbol to hide and then the report line controller will pick it up. And just the report line controller for this specific line here that we want to dim. And then we do it again and then we hit it again. And then when we hit the unhide, it's going to have a different message in there. As you can see there, we have the unhide message now. So if you're new to Turbo and Simulus JS and you want to know how to execute some JavaScript on your front end after a Turbo request, I think this is one way to do it. I haven't seen any other guide or tutorial suggesting having a special event dispatcher controller, but this is an idea that I came up with and I don't know, let me know what you think. Is this a, a good best practice to use? So let me know in the comments. And if you like this video, give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I'll see you in the next video.